The first dinosaur DNA sequences that were published, what came back was a close match to a bird. We now know that it was an exact match to a chicken, and some investigative work found that the excavation team who'd been working on those bones had fried chicken for lunch every day. <laughs> So it's chicken contamination. Yeah, it's like greasy fingers wow. on your dinosaur fossils. Oh and my look, God. now we have ancient DNA. That yeah. is hilarious. <laughs> All right, so this story deserves a little context. It's not that it's wrong per se, but let's put this into context. So, you know, the ancient DNA is a very real science, but it's very tricky, right? Because you're, they're looking for tiny bits of DNA, and then they amplify it. Uh, and because they're amplifying it so much, it means that the slightest contamination can then produce a signal, right? You could, be, you could amplify even a small amount of contaminated DNA. The question is, have we been able to find any dinosaur DNA on any DNA fossils or remains? And so far, the answer appears to be no, there are no, there's no confirmed dinosaur DNA. Sorry, you Jurassic Park fans. Uh, there is also evidence that DNA has a half-life of 500 and something years, and pretty much the upper limit of how long DNA could survive is about 6 million years or so. So about an order of magnitude shorter than when the last dinosaurs were around. So there probably isn't any dinosaur DNA anywhere left in the world. Uh, so whenever so a researcher claims, hey, we found di you know, DNA on this dinosaur fossil, it's, ex it's immediately extremely controversial, right? The scientific community doesn't go, oh, dinosaur DNA, good for you. They say, no, nah, probably not. You have to make sure there wasn't contamination because that's the most obvious problem with any ancient DNA research is that there are sources of contamination. It turns out that the researchers themselves are the most common source of contamination, right? So it's, there's a lot, of a lot of times it's human DNA. Uh, so, of course, if you find human DNA, it's easy to detect, and you can say, well, it's clearly not a dinosaur. The, the thing that's interesting about chickens is that, well, dinosaurs are birds, right? And birds are dinosaurs. Um, they, they are, or more actually, birds are dinosaurs. They're part of the same clade. And so we expect there to be a lot of overlap between like chicken DNA, for example, and a theropod dinosaur DNA. Um, so that much wasn't surprising when they initially started to find the signal. But of course, eventually they, they realized, oh, this is not just bird-like DNA. It's actually chicken DNA. And so they, you know, by doing the rigorous follow-up, they discovered that it was, in fact, a source of contamination, like pretty much everybody figured it was. right? And the scientific community responded by saying, this is probably contamination. They confirmed that it was contamination. We still don't know where it came from. The greasy finger hypothesis is just one potential explanation. I don't think they've proven that that's where the source of contamination was, you know, the fried chicken that they were eating at times for lunch. Uh, but it doesn't matter. It was pro almost certainly contamination. It wasn't, you know, genuine dinosaur DNA. Dinosaur DNA probably has not survived, you know, long enough that we could detect it today. But this is a normal process of science, you know, the, an extraordinary claim was met with the appropriate level of healthy skepticism. It turns out it was contamination and we moved on, right? The, you know, it's, uh, the, the people will try to make this into some deeper, you know, story about don't trust scientists or whatever, everything else is bullshit and just read the comments under the video and you'll see all kinds of nonsense claims. Nope, this is science working.